Now, disclaimer, this is a very small data set. I only picked three or four, in some cases, one or two games from a particular year. So, last year I built my first gaming PC ever, and I haven't done PC gaming since like 1999. Um, Last 22 years, I've been a Mac user and I'm doing video editing and stuff like that. I don't know what's going on in the PC gaming space. But now I've built this machine and I started downloading games and learning more about it. And I started noticing the minimum system requirements looked a lot older than I had built my computer. And that's interesting. So it got me thinking, how have the minimum system requirements changed over the years in this time that I have been gone? And can this info help you decide how to build out your computer? Are there trends that we can see in that data that'll help us predict the best practices for when you're trying to future-proof your computer? Does any of this data actually mean anything? I have no idea where this is going. I have no big aha moment at the end of this video. I just wanted to see what the trends look like for minimum system requirements. First, let's take a look at how I collected the data and how we're going to use it. So for these two examples, we're going to be using Diablo 2 from the year 2000 and NBA 2K23 from 2022. As you can see in the minimum system requirements for Diablo, the CPU required at minimum was a Pentium 233, which came out in 1997. It is three years prior, so it gets a score of three. You could have had a state-of-the-art computer from three years ago and still run Diablo 2. Conversely, NBA 2K23, the Intel Core i3-2100, came out in 2011. So you could have had an 11-year-old state-of-the-art system and still run this game. That's a scoring model that I used for all of this. So how does this pan out over the last 22, 23 years? All right, heading into the Wayback Machine, all the way back to the year 2000, taking a look at the early days of PC gaming becoming super mainstream. You can see here that the average score that these games got was about three. Your system had to be three years old. Uh, in some cases, you can see here Metal Gear Solid 2, Prince of Persia and Rainbow Six Vegas, you could only have a system that was two years old. So you, you had to be pretty recent back then. But we see a trend as we go forward in time. Over the course of the last 23 years, there has been definitely an increase in the age your computer can be and the games that are being released. Now, the reasons behind this are varying and interesting to be sure you have factors such as what the game developer is trying to portray on screen you have who the game developer is trying to cater to and you also have the mighty dollar something that i found out is a well-known fact within the gaming development community is that what you really want to aim for while building a game is can it run on a windows potato Incidentally, it turns out internet cafes and gaming cafes and places like China are huge markets for games when they get released. And if they can't play on some of these aging machines that are in these public facilities around the world, they're not going to get the users and the money that they need to have the game succeed. That's just one interesting factor. There's, there's many others. For instance, Throughout this time period, we were all experiencing, or at least witnessing, the console wars. So in the early days, we had our Nintendos and our Ataris, but by the time we reached the 2000s, we've already had one PlayStation, and shortly thereafter, Xbox joins the fray, and they start battling it out every few years. You can see here on this chart where the, the increases in the scores for each game correlate to the release of the two most prominent gaming systems of the time, that these games that are being developed for PC also have to work on these consoles as well. 
we do see an interesting dip in 2015, right after the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 get released, where there's a, the games that some of the bigger titles that got released that year, we see that they were as low as a score of one, which is very interesting. Metal Gear Solid 5 you had to have basically a state-of-the-art system to play that on PC. But what's most interesting is in the recent years and surrounding the pandemic, we see a massive rise in the scores for these games where you can have systems that are eight to 10 years old and still be able to play some of these big name titles. So back in 2020, during the pandemic, we're all sitting around in lockdown you wanted to play Hades, which was a huge hit, apparently, you could have a system that was 10 years old and still rock that. Valorant, which was a big name. F1 2020, which I personally had a lot of fun playing, but on Xbox, was a, a big deal, and your system could be eight years old. We see another dip in 2021, and then another rise again. This most recent year, 2023, we see another mixed bag like last year where we have some mid-range big name titles, Hogwarts, Resident Evil 4, which I believe is a remake, and Jedi Survivor all in the five to six year range. Whereas Diablo 4, a long awaited title, is another 11 year game where you can have your system be 11 years old and still rock this. Now, I personally believe this probably is because they're catering to an audience that has been waiting around since the last game. Incidentally, if you built a state-of-the-art PC in 2012 to play Diablo 3, you could still use it to play Diablo 4. I think that's kind of charming. If that's what they were aiming for on their minimum system requirements, mad props to the developers of Diablo. All right, looking at the big picture, what does the data tell us? It tells us that there is definitely a positive trend. There's an upward swing we can see here. In the last couple of years, there have been games that could be used on hardware as old as 11 years. That is fantastic. What does that mean for you as you're building a PC? It means future proofing is a concern, but you probably won't have to upgrade as much over the lifespan of your computer. Now, disclaimer. This is a very small data set. I only picked three or four, in some cases, one or two games from a particular year. This is not a lot of data to give you a very accurate output, but it does show us a positive trend. That's undeniable. It would be exciting to take this to the max and maybe you know, take 10, 20, 30 games a year and figure out what are the numbers telling us. But between the console wars, the advancement of various CPU technology, the GPU wars over the last couple of years, definitely driving what people want and what the game developers can put out there. It's, it, it's very interesting information. Do with it what you will. I don't know if there is a, a big aha about this, but... Uh, if you know any information or have any insights on uh, these kind of trends and what the future may hold, put it in the comments. I'd love to learn more. Thanks for watching. I don't normally talk with my mic like this. I just wanted to be able to read my shirt. Yeah.